Rejoice, 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 rejoice. Emmanuel shall ransom captive Israel. Rejoice with me, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Sunday edition of the God Minute. I'm Father Michael, and on this third Sunday of Advent, I want to break open the Word of God for us and reflect on the passage of the Gospel given to us today by the Church. The Gospel chosen for today comes from the first chapter of John's Gospel, verses 6 through 8 and verses 19 through 28. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He said, no. So they said to him, who are you so that we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? John replied, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why do you baptize? If you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet, John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, speaking of baptism... I was reminded of a cute story. After the baptism of his baby brother in church one Sunday, little Johnny sobbed all the way home in the back seat of the car. His father asked him three times what was wrong. Finally, the boy replied, that priest said we, he wanted us brought up in a Christian home, but, but I want to stay with you guys. <laughs> little Johnny's father got the message and they began to go to church more regularly. Needless to say, the family had a bit of catching up to do. But one day, they decided to send Johnny to Sunday school. And his teacher asked him, Johnny, tell me, do you say prayers before eating? No, ma'am, little Johnny replied. I don't have to. My mom is a good cook. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Well, on this, the third Sunday of Advent also known as Gaudete Sunday, it should be rather obvious in the readings today that we've had a shift in our theme of the Advent season. It's turned from preparing for Christ's second coming in glory to a definite preparation to remember the anniversary of Christ's incarnation over 2,000 years ago. This is the time when we actually begin preparing for Christmas. The word Gaudete means rejoice. Our rejoicing is born in the reality that the Lord is near. This is marked by the rose-colored candle upon our Advent wreaths. In truth, today is called Gaudete Sunday because the Mass, in its Latin pre-Vatican II form, began with the opening antiphon, Gaudete in Domino Semper. Rejoice in the Lord always. In the past, when Advent was a season of penance, the celebrant of the liturgy used to wear vestments with a penitential color of purple or violet, really. The celebrant, in order to remind the people that they were preparing for the joyful feast of the birth of Jesus, changed from wearing purple and wore rose-colored vestments on the third Sunday of Advent. Of course, most folks refer to the color as pink, which often has parishioners coming up to the priest on this Sunday who courageously wears this color, saying things like, Father, you look so pretty in pink. Yikes. Anyway, it's rose. Rose. (laughs) I don't know if that makes it any better, 
but it's rose. So, on this Sunday, we light the rose candle on our Advent wreath, and the priest may wear rose vestments to show a shift in our preparation and to express our joy in the coming of the Messiah. The primary common theme running through all of the readings today is that of encouraging joy as we await the rebirth of Jesus in our hearts and our lives. The second common theme is one of bearing witness to Christ and his mission. All the readings for this third Sunday of Advent remind us that the coming of Jesus, past, present, and future, has changed us and the course of human history forever and for the better. The first reading tells us that we should rejoice because the promised Messiah is coming as our Savior and Liberator, saving us by liberating us from our bondages. The responsorial psalm of the day is taken from Mary's Magnificat, in which she exclaims, My whole being proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit finds joy in God my Savior. And St. Paul, in the second reading, advises us to rejoice always by leading blameless, holy, and thankful lives guided by the Holy Spirit, because Christ is faithful and will come again to reward us for being faithful. Finally, today's gospel tells us that John the baptizer came as a witness to testify to the light, namely Jesus. The coming of Jesus, the light, into the world is cause for rejoicing as light shatters the darkness from the world. We should be glad and rejoice also because, like John the baptizer, we too are chosen to bear witness to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We're supposed to be now the light that's reflected in the darkness of our world and all that consumes that darkness. We are to reflect Jesus, the light in our lives so that we may radiate it and illumine the dark lives of others around us. The joyful message of today's liturgy is clear. The salvation we await with rejoicing will liberate both the individual and the community and its special focus will be the poor and the lowly, not just the rich and the powerful. And all people, all people, race, creed, color, way of life, all people will come to rejoice in the light, bathed in that light that comes with Christ the Lord and his faithful ones. Listen again to the words of the gospel today. John makes it clear that he is merely the one to ready us for Christ, for the Christ will come baptizing with the Holy Spirit and fire. You know, people had turned away from God and his covenant with them. Christ's coming to earth shows the incredible mercy of God to save us from ourselves. We, like John, must testify to the light who is Christ, the light of the world. This testimony means that we are the present-day prophetic voices for this age. And let's face it, in this time, in this world, in this age, the light needs to shine forth from us. We must be the examples of mercy and compassion as we seek to grow in holiness. We must bear witness to Jesus in our daily lives and seek to evangelize the whole world simply by the way we live our lives, just by our daily example of how we go about things. You know, every year during Christmas time, we give gifts. We show love and concern for others. In fact, it's the one time of year where the most people return to going to church, even more than Easter. So why is it that once Christmas is over, everything changes? It seems like we go back to focusing on ourselves. We forget about the poor. We forget about peace on earth. We forget about loving our neighbor. We don't even sing any good songs. Brothers and sisters, loving God and our neighbor never should go out of style. 
It should be the way we daily live and love. Okay, that sounds kind of preachy, but let me just tell you, I'm talking as much to you as I am to myself because I need that message. I can sing joy to the world and peace on earth and silent night and all those beautiful hymns and find that they just bless my heart. But if it's only for a moment, I'm wasting my time. So let's be intentional about this new beginning we've started with the Advent season, with a new liturgical year. Let's allow the message and the meaning of the voices of Advent and Christmas to give us the courage to live in joy and proclaim the faith and hope and love that the Savior brings. I'll make you a deal. I'll pray for you to allow this in your life if you pray for me to do a better job of it in mine. Sounds like a pretty good deal. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Blessings to all of you, my brothers and sisters. Thanks for joining me on the God Minute today and allowing me the privilege to break open the word with you. I pray we can all erupt with the joy of Christmas and keep it flowing throughout the year ahead. Take good care of yourself and one another, and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. In December, we give our gifts wishing well to our world. Peace on earth to everyone A time to be joyful when all is calm And all is bright But why does it change with the seasons And why can't we just hold on To silent nights, holy Oh!